Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, if I promise, I have to deliver. I Someone asked a question, I told the person to hold on. At the right time, we'll talk about it. And then, Grandma had been hammering there, hammering there. And uh, I have no choice but to let Grandma know the in and out of a polygamy in Ghana or in Africa. How many couples do we have in the bus? We have two couples. Okay, first of all, I would like to ask the woman a question. I'll, I, nah, just be frank with me. And then look at my face. Don't look at your husband's face. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, eyeball to eyeball. Would you like to have... You have married already, but would you like to have another man as your husband? No. Yes. No, thank you. Okay. Okay, let's ask the other couple. Um, will you, madam, will you also like to have another man as your husband, to have two husbands? No. Yeah, no. Okay. Why? Yes. Why? Can you can you please do me a favor and come a little bit forward? Do everybody want to hear what we're saying? Thank you. We are sharing. And then uh uh the couples please don't take this so serious. We are just sharing and it's good for us to share. Black is beautiful and uh we always share. Uh, but you have to stretch a little bit because the cord is so short. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It would be too much stress on me. I would have to answer to two men. <laughs> and then I guess I would have to have sex with two men. <laughs> and I don't know if it would be at the same time. <laughs> so, so I think it would be a little bit too hard. One might want me to go on the ceiling and another want me to drop it like it's hot. <laughs> so I, I think that will be a lot. Too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love France, you. Let's give her a hand. Let's give her a last class to get up right. Okay, we'd like to hear, man, we'd like also to hear from you. <laughs> okay, that's the question to the uh, uh, women or the ladies. Let's go to the men. Okay, the men, the two couples, I would really like to have another woman as your wife. Yes, sir. Okay, come and tell us the reason why. <laughs> Everybody has a question. You will. <laughs> today be today. <laughs> okay, just squeeze yourself in the seat and then uh, but you have to pull your head a little bit here because the cord is short. Uh, no, I would not. Uh, one wife is enough. Uh, first of all, if, I, if somebody else had to share me with her, that would be disrespectful to her. Uh -huh. uh, second of all, it's, you know, a job just having one wife. <laughs> And you know, satisfying her completely. So no, there's no way I would. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, we'd like to hear from our brother too. What about yes, sir. Yes, we'd like to hear from you. If you can, please. Do us a favor. Oh, yes. Would you like to have another oh, woman as your wife? No, don't look at your face. Look at me. <laughs> no. No. Oh yes. Yeah, he probably will. Okay, why? Uh, if you would have come here to share with us, we would have all loved that. Come on, Horace. Alright, I'm turning on, nigga. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, let me ask a general question. If you are married, I'm asking only the ladies. If you are married, those who haven't married, or those who have married and now uh, uh, are no more in marriage, uh, would you like to have another man as a husband, additional husband? No. Why no? Come again. You won't. Okay. Okay, so let me ask the guys. Guys, are you there? Okay, let me show my hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, the guys. Would you like to have another woman as your wife, additional wife? Put your hands up. Yes. Okay, come forward and share with us why. Yeah, come. Okay, please, please pave the way for him to come. Come and share with us. Yeah, we, we are all learning, you know. And then after that, I will tell you some story. Uh, so come, come forward and share with us um, why we want to have another additional woman as a wife. Let's put our hands together for him. Yeah, very brave, brave man. Yeah, brave 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 man. Brave. Yes. The pod is short, so okay. unless me be sit here. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, you know, sometimes it's an age thing. Uh -huh. um, you feel a different way at a different age. <clears throat> So, um, I was married before. Um, <laughs> it's hard to say. I was married before, and we was married for three years. It didn't work out. Um, in my younger years, I tweeted, I, I cheated in my 20s and 30s. And I think when I hit 40, I became more faithful and, uh, and dedicated. But I, I do notice, though, um, um, in business, I took on a business partner um, and had a girlfriend at the same time. So eventually me and my business partner became a little close um, and I realized some women um, provide certain things to you, some women don't. Um, so just being honest, my business partner um, provided some things and help for me that a woman in my life didn't. Mm -hmm. So it was like a helpmate in a sense. Um, we had became intimate secretly and um, we just done great business together. She was um, efficient in ways in business and paperwork and that my girlfriend wasn't. So I was seeing two women at the time, secretly. But, see, in, in, in polygyny, sometimes they say it's for the benefit of the women and children, okay? In polygyny, every woman can have a husband and every child can have a father. So in polygyny, there is some benefits to it and really it's for the women and children. It's not per se about the sex, what have you, but that's just the way it is, um, and being honest. Today, I don't know, I, would, I wouldn't take two wives. I have a girlfriend now, and I just have a few friends on the side, but um, that's just my life. I live alone. My girlfriend lives alone. She's an assistant principal at Compton High School, and she prefers to live alone and stay in her nice house she has, and I stay in my place, and we just have a a cool relationship like that. Um, I would never flaunt in her face anything I do outside of her. Um, she doesn't sweat me about anything. I don't sweat her about anything. She don't check my phone. She don't question me. I don't question her. I don't check her phone. So things just kind of work out smooth and we get along and never had an argument ever in the two years we've been together. But it's just my spin on it. You know, no harm, but uh, you know, I just think it's an age thing. You know, some men in their 20s and 30s may need or require that, you know. It just depends on if you got kids, you know. Um, I have a couple friends who live a polygynous life. Um, but it's just different forms of it. Everybody don't live in the same household. <laughs> some women have their own home, and he visits. He goes there for three days, and goes to the other house for four days, and everybody's fine. 
the children all have a father. Um, like in ancient times, a lot of times you have a group of men who go on the explorations or go to war. Half the men get slayed and half come back. So then you have a population of just say 100,000 women and now 50,000 men. So society works it out where they look out for the women and then the children. And they're added on to families. So we, you know, we in America, we have a different mindset and you know, may not under understand certain things, but just the way it is around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for him, for frank speaking. Thank you so much. Yeah, I saw a hand at the back there. Yeah, the man. Uh, can, can someone also come and share with us? Uh, I want to marry one more. Oh, okay. Yes, please come. Uh, we have a lady who wants to share with us. Uh, maybe she wants to have a, a two or three men. No. <laughs> yes, okay, short. so um, I just wanted to say, it's like um, I, I was once in a polygamy relationship. Turning this way. I was once in a polygamy relationship. I was married for 20, 20 years. We stayed there. I was with him for 23. And based on my own experience of polygamy, it taught me discipline. It taught me the respect of a family. And it taught me that you should be true to yourself no matter what other people think. Do what makes your life, what makes you happy. Because throughout life, throughout your journey in life, We've been taught, oh, this person, you have to follow this person, you have to follow that person, but <laughs> on your own experience, what makes you happy, that's what you have to do. So after that relationship was over, I, it taught me about my own self and my desire needs and what. Not that I want to be married to a whole bunch of men or sleep with a bunch of men. I love and I respect the black man that is like my God of gods of gods. And I love being around men. I learn from men. I don't want to sleep with all of them, but I love looking at that milk chocolate. And I get in some men, they, they like some men that they, they can't, I think it deals with your ego. You know, like if it's okay for men to have wives, and I don't want to be a man, I love being feminine. But I feel that. When I did my vision board a year ago, I said to be married and have my boo. And I, I wrote it down. And my daughter was like, Ma, how are you going to have two men? Are you crazy? Look, I said, this is my vision board. You do what you like, I'm going to do what I like. So I just believe in honesty and truth. And I think that no matter whomever you're with, you need to be true to yourself and be honest with that person. So whether you're seeing one man, two men, three men, two or three women, you know, give that other person the choice to decide. You shouldn't be lied to, you know. I think you should keep an open mind. Just how we were told that there was a Santa Claus, that there was Jesus, and people, when I was a Christian, you couldn't tell me nothing about a white Jesus. I love my white Jesus. And, um, you know, but it's different levels to life. You know, like you have a sentence. Uh, for me, learning about life is like a sentence. You can say dick runs. It's a noun and it's a verb. That's a sentence. That's what Christianity was for me. Then I learned about Islam and I, I mixed my salat five times a day and did all of that. And that's, that sentence would be like dick runs to the store. That's still another sentence. It's just added pronouns. And then you learn about the Hebrew way and you say dick runs to the store, fell down the street, came back. But it's still sentence. So it's different levels to life. And though you may be in just one relationship, two relationships, however it is, no matter where you are in your in your journey in this life, be true to yourself, love. I love loving people. I love connecting with people. And be more, just, just be happy. Do what makes you feel good. Because at the bottom line, your children can't answer for you. Your mother and father can't answer you. And when you go into the next level, you're gonna have to look at yourself. So if you're happy within yourself, the power to heal yourself, regardless if it's physical, financial, spiritual, it all goes within yourself. So love yourself first and love and then love others abundantly and be honest. That's what my, my, my quote of the day is. Be real. Thank you. Let's put our hands together. Let's clap for it. Thank you so much, sister. Okay, all is good. Okay, come forward. Come, come please. Yeah. What I tell us, uh, uh, what I would want to have uh, one wife, two wives, or multiple of five. <laughs> Sit down. Okay. And then, no, no, you stand here. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be behind you. 
Yeah. No, no. Uh -huh. The court cannot go too far. Uh, or, or let it yeah, I believe in having one woman. Uh, and what X said, that is true, X. When you in your 20s and 30s, you think you can have everything. And even me, I'm 49 now. I have young women that holler at me. And it's, uh, what's the word? It made me feel good, I ain't gonna lie. I still feel like I can get them, but. That two, three sharing and stuff like that, I just got one word for y'all, mixing juices. I ain't into mixing juices. And this generation that's going on now is mixing too many juices out here. And I ain't into juice mixing. You know, if you wanna do what you wanna do, you wanna know where it come from. And I'ma leave it at that. Oh, this guy. <laughs> I'll really press our mic. <laughs> okay, the next person. Oh, I saw a hand there, and the guy, yeah, 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 please come forward. Yeah, come and share with us, come and share with us. Oh, yeah, come over. Come and share with us uh, your side of having Two women or two girlfriends. <laughs> hey, let's encourage him. Let's put our hands together for him. It's not easy to come for the road and mic. You can just stand, stand here. Okay. First of all, I want to ask you a question. How many girlfriends do you have? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's being recorded, remember? Well, like, hold on. <laughs> My question is. How many girlfriends do you have currently? Say zero, say zero. Well, I wouldn't say they are girlfriends, they just friends that I'm occasionally talking to on certain days. There you go, there you go. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, I would say about three wives, cause oh. I, they'll have to be like, they can't be messing with no one else. They have to be strictly for me. Because, <laughs> like you said, mixing juices. Like, I don't want nobody else leftovers. Like, I mean, that's how I'm just saying it. But I think I want that when I settle down, maybe like 35. But I'm going to still live my best life while I'm young. But yeah, they can't be seeing nobody else when I go to one wife, OK? Then if she made me mad, go to the other one. <laughs> if the other one get me mad, go to the other one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for you. Wow, wow. I'm just enjoying the conversation. Grandma, don't take it serious. <laughs> okay, okay, all is good. Um, I know you've all heard that in Africa, men have multiple wives. Yes. I'm going to give a short lecture on why men in Africa have multiple wives. In the olden days, when I, I want to say olden days, 200, 300, uh, 80, even 90 years ago, there was a numerous of war. And women don't fight war. The women will never go for war. It is the men who are the soldiers of the community. So in case there is any fight, the men have to pick up arms, bow and arrow, spear, to fight, strategize to win their war. For example, if 100 men goes to war and 50 of them lose their lives, who will marry their wives? They are all married. You will never go to war if you are not married. It is said that in our proverbs or in our tradition that if you are not married, excuse my language, you don't have sense. You don't know what is in the marriage, the in and out of marriage. You are not of age. But when you marry, that means you are of age. And before you go for war, you make sure you marry, especially 
uh, the young ladies, they will give you a wife. So that whilst you are fighting, you think about your wife and you will not get yourself to be killed. So that you, uh, at the end of the war, you will come and have your wife. Then many some people will die. So our great, 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 great grandparents put this thing in order. Anytime that there is a war, at the end of the war, those who fought the soldiers, they have to give them a wife, additional wife. Those who lose their life, their wife should be catered for. So those who are alive have to be given another wife. Meanwhile, you have one wife already. When they give you a wife, what they are telling you is that continue the genealogy of this, your brother. Continue the uh, uh, yes, the genealogy of this person. His kids are for you. So, you continue the genealogy and they give you one wife. That is one. Two, if there is any epidemic in the community, normally epidemic kills a lot of children more than adults. So if you have three or four children and there is an epidemic and they die, you put all your eggs in one basket with one wife. The best way or the advices for you to marry more women to get more children. Three, in the olden days, there is nothing like insurance. Currently, people have health insurance, vehicle insurance, home insurance, office insurance, and whatnot. In those days, there is nothing like insurance. The best insurance that you can get is your children. You have more children, and when you have more children, for example, if you have 20 children with three wives, and at the end of every year or every month, each and every child brings you $100 free of charge. That is your insurance. You've taken good care of them to grow. Now they are working. So at the end of every month, they bring you money. No tax. You have, how much money are you going to have? Over about $2,000 free of charge. Then you take it. Human beings are considered as an asset, not a liability. On our land, human being is an asset, not an, a liability. That is why even if a woman, uh, uh, someone go and throw his child away or whatsoever, they just go and pick it and send him home to have a home. Whilst now we call it orphanage home. Because that child, you don't know what will come of that child. The final thing is that in the olden days, there are two professions. Some people said three. That is farming and then prostitution. Okay, let me ask this question. Farming and prostitution, which one came first? <laughs> farming. <laughs> Or someone says farming. <laughs> what about you, also? Prostitution. Yes. Can you justify it? <laughs> farming and prostitution. Which one came first? Oh, wow. Well. Prostitution. Prostitution. Come again. Farming. Farming and herding. Farming and herding. Okay. Now. In the olden days, we don't have tractors and machines to weed. They use human beings and animals to weed. So therefore, if you have three wives, and all the three wives have three, three children each, you have nine children. And these nine children, if you send them to your farm, they help you 
you have a larger farm. So at the end of the year, when you harvest your products, you have enough products. Your first wife is the administrator of the home. Some, most at times, it is your first wife who will recommend to the man to get a second wife. The reason is that, one, all of you go to farm, you farm. When you come, it is not the man who prepares food at home. It is the woman. In Africa, it is the woman who has to prepare food and feed the husband and the children. Two, you have to clean the house. After eating, you have to clean the bowls. So the woman will tell the man that, you know, as a result of this duty, I'm always tired. And then in the night also, she has to perform her duties. <laughs> so therefore, what do you do? The woman will recommend another woman in the community or outside the community. The reason is that it is your wife who knows what you want and what you like. Nobody else apart from your first wife or your wife. It is your wife who knows the color that you like. You've been with her for some years. It is your wife who knows the type of food that you like best. So she knows down there the type of woman who will be able to help her at the kitchen and other places. So she recommend the, uh, another wife and then the husband accept it. Now the second wife who is coming is coming as a helper to the first wife. So the first wife sits down with her. There is my husband. You are coming in as a second wife. We have seven days in a week. I have the right to visit my husband's bedroom for four days. And I'll give you three days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is for you. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is for me. And she sits down and give all those others. You are to do this, you are to do that, you are to do this. There is no jealousy. She administer everything in the house correctly. At a point in time, if she go in for the uh, second wife, or third wife, sorry, third wife, at the end of every year, the man sits all the wives down. Ask them, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? Do you ask the third one, second one, and then the first one. Even if you ask the first one, whatever the first one says, the second one's own should be underneath, below. For example, if the first one says, okay, I need $500, the second wife cannot say, I need $500 or six. No way, it's disrespectful to the first wife. You have to say, I need 400 And then the third one says, I need 300 Sorry, Come again. Sorry, yes, you cannot say I want more than the senior wife. She is the senior and you have to accord her the seniority. It is in the system and you cannot go beyond that. Two, if you are an ordinary person, a royal, if you are a royal, the king passes away and then they nominate you as the next chief in the community or the next family head in the community. If you have a wife already, it is our tradition that the stool that you are going to sit on will give you a stool wife. Your wife, first wife, knows and she understands. As a result of that, you, the man, or your council of elders will first talk to your wife and pacify your wife. There are some things that you need to give it to your wife so that another woman also will come and share the love with your husband. So they will ask you, the wife, first wife, and say, I want this, I want that, I want this. If it's too much, they will tell you to reduce it, and they will look for it for you. And then, 
the first uh, second wife also because she is coming in they will talk to her at the first wife's presence so they understand there is pure understanding between them no jealousy i have a friend he passed on uh, some few years ago she's a police commander and he has three wives i knew the first wife but after some years when i went there to their house i saw three wives i i thought the wives two sisters who are helping and this the first one was buffing the children another one also was in the kitchen another one was in the room cleaning the room so when i got there he let me in call all those ladies they came he said oh um come now you know that's my first wife already this is my first wife this is my second wife this is my third wife so what <laughs> and they play together when you see them sitting down doing nothing then they uh, chatting or talking among themselves they all eat from one bowl as a result of that no one poisons anyone <laughs> you cannot do it because you yourself you are going to eat the food all of us are eating in one bowl so there is nothing like jealousy and one hidden truth is that if all of us in this bus eat from one bowl there is unity among us <laughs> sometimes someone would like to take the last meat and then you see the one who took it will go around and share everybody should take a, bit, a piece of it there is oneness there is unity among us individualism is thrown away so that is what our great great grandparents instituted so that they will have more children remember from the beginning i said that children are not liability they are your insurance so the more children you have the more insurance you have in your old age these are the kids who are coming to help you to live even if you can't work your children have to help you you do have need money they need to produce and do that and it's still we do this in, in our country in africa my mother is 85 years old she celebrated at 85 85 year uh, two weeks ago i lost my dad 2015 when my dad was alive now my father went outside the marriage to have married another woman and that woman have three children with him during the funeral all of us sat and then we talked about how to get a befitting funeral for our dad we all sit down and eat together yes my brother is my sister if any of them need help they come to us if we need help we go to them and we, we do things together and that is unity you cannot separate yourself to do things on your own no but rather you need to get together you have the we feeling by so doing there is a proverb that says that unity is strength if you take a broom one broom you can break it but a bunch of them you cannot break it no matter how you are and that's the reason why our great great grandparents instituted this multiple marriage you 